solar sites are not the ideal parcels of flat land that they used to be. So solar mounting and tracker providers have adapted systems to meet today's tough terrain challenges. Here to make the pitch for TerraSmart's TerraTrack 1P updates is Chase Anderson, Director of Platform Engineering. So uh, Chase, before we get into the nuances of the new TerraTrack 1P, when we talk about tough terrain challenges, you know, what are some of those challenges that you're starting to encounter? Yeah, so as you said, a lot of the good terrain is no longer available. And so what we have left are sites which traditionally wouldn't have been, you know, ideal for, for solar trackers. And with these sites comes a lot of different grade vari variation across the site. You've got interesting subgrade or underground issues to deal with, with rocks and cobble and all sorts of different soil types. It's really good to have a deep understanding of what you're getting yourself into on these projects by researching early and upfront uh, with more advanced geotech investigations. You know, we've seen a lot more LIDAR based topo mapping, um, which is very helpful in planning the layouts of the site. But ultimately, you know, labor is getting more expensive. The cost of doing grading is rising uh, very quickly. So the idea is to let the product do most of the hard work and minimize the grading uh, or completely eliminate it. Have we uncovered new ways to design or install systems that better solve for these challenges? There's two parts to it, really the product itself and then the, the install. The feedback loop that we get because we design the products, we engineer the products, we manufacture the products, and we build the products ourselves. So I don't I don't know of too many companies that kind of have that full circle. Our engineers are able to work directly with our construction teams to find out what could be better, what could we improve, what would make it easier. But then the, the install side, because we're doing the install also, we found a lot of ways to innovate around the install processes and procedures. And one way specifically related to the tough terrain is with the introduction several years ago of our leg algorithm, basically a, um, an advanced algorithm we use to set the leg heights based on the topo. You know, it maximizes energy production uh, and all the, the nice benefits that you could bring, but the real benefit is the installers in the field don't have to make field decisions on the height to set the legs. It's really difficult when you've got terrain going up and down. You can use string lines and you can try your best, but sometimes you might get it wrong and you have to redo it again and again. And you're really only thinking about the one row that you're installing, not its height compared to the height of the row next to it and the shading and all the other issues that you may get. So is it is it fair to say this is more process innovation than product innovation? Like it just seems the with the the, the, the data and the learning you have and just like the testing that's happened that you know, you've obviously tweaked the product, which we'll get into, but it seems like the, I don't know, the uh, everything else that's going into site planning and pr project planning is almost doing more than just the product updates. Very early on in the process, we um, will do what's called a slope analysis. We essentially use the same tool that I just told you about, the same leg algorithm. We use it right up front when a customer provides Topo so that we have the best understanding of what we're getting ourselves into and can plan for that. Um, our products are all designed to be highly configurable to the customer's needs. So by doing that advanced slope analysis up front, we can select the right configuration and make sure the right pieces and parts are getting to the site. There are things though in the product that do make it unique, especially on the ground screw side. Ground screws tend to have some interesting install tolerances. The ground screw tolerance is at grade, whereas a driven pile is, you know, at the top of the pile, which could be four or five, six feet in the air. The result of that is that we have to kind of build the tolerances and the adjustability differently for ground screws than we do for piles. So the, the product does have unique capabilities there. And the other piece is that telescoping leg that we have in the ground screw is just a, incredibly powerful at dealing with these terrain issues. So it's really a mix of both and they work together. Okay, so uh, so let's get into the product a little bit more, specifically the TerraTrack 1P. Um, I guess my first question is, you know, why the 1P over the 2P? I mean, you have both options. Um, and is it for some of the terrain, tough terrain challenge reasons that we were speaking of earlier? So a lot of times um, customers will come to us and they don't have a preference. Um, in those cases, we use all the tools we have available to look at, you know, the cost of 1P, the cost of 2P, the, 
the layout itself. You know, there's several factors. In general, I think 1P tends to have a lower cost per watt. But it really depends. And, and our ability to offer both is nice because, you know, some sites, 1P doesn't make sense. Some sites, 2P doesn't make sense. Uh, 1P is great for installers. It's nice and low to the ground, very easy to put together. We've done a lot of work to reduce the part count. So very uh, quick installs. 2P does, you know, pack more modules into a shorter length. So on certain site sizes, um, 2P might make more sense. If you look at our two products, our 1P and our 2P, they share nearly 80% of the same components. I think that the 1P, it's our newest offering, but really, you know, the reliability and all the things that we had already developed and proven with 2P are still there in 1P because of the, the shared parts and pieces. So. Yeah. You know, I'm just in general, TerraSmart's flexible design options always stands out to me. The, uh, the, the great example of that would be with foundation types. TerraSmart's long been both a ground screw and driven pile expert. So you are able to provide agnostic foundation solutions based upon each project's needs. And so with TerraTrack, you know, you have both. Piles are kind of more of the industry standard. So I want us to look at the pros and cons of when it's best to use ground screws instead. We have the ability to look at both side by side. You know, we've got an extensive geotech team here at TerraSmart, so we're always analyzing geotech reports. If you've got rock or really hard soil that you can't drive into or you'd experience refusal uh, with a driven pile, um, a ground screw is going to be a great option. The remediation options for driven piles can be quite expensive, and they can really uh, impact your schedule quite a bit because the velocity of install is slow. So for those sites, Ground screws are an easy choice. The velocity is very predictable, even in the worst, toughest, hardest rock. And it, it all comes down to the size of the hole that's being drilled, you know, in the rock for a ground screw. It's very small. Whereas a driven pile, if you're doing like a drill and drive, that hole is at least six inches, if not larger. That's the kind of obvious reason why you might use ground screws versus piles. But the really the, the one that's less obvious is the frost heave issues that occur. What I mean by that is when you drive a pile, you have to account for the frost heave forces. If you don't properly account for it, over time, that pile will lift out of the ground. It can cause structural damage, module damage, micro cracks, all sorts of things. The reason why the, the frost heave forces are so high on the pile is that its surface area is much larger. So that add freeze force and the frost heave forces are just larger. So you've typically got to go with a much deeper pile. We, you know, we install a lot of projects in Maine with ground screws. And if we were to do those with driven piles, the project probably wouldn't pencil out. The reason ground screws are so successful in handling frosty is that A, the surface area is much smaller. I think it's three or four times less surface area. So the, the force itself is already reduced. But B, the threads always sit below the frost portion of the soil. So all of our tension capacity comes from the threaded section. And we're able to resist those frost heave forces pretty easily. So we do pull testing on both piles and screws. Sometimes we do both on one site. The end result usually is one of two charts. The first is the, dri the driven pile cost and the ground screw cost on one chart. And what you'll see is the cost of the ground screws is pretty level across the board. The pile cost might start lower than ground screws, but as you hit refusals or unknown events, that line curves up to the right. Same line for schedule. I think we used a project in Maine on a recent webinar as an example. It takes 66 days to install install the screws. It took, you know, the equivalent pile would have taken about 70 something days. But as you hit refusals, that 70 days easily turns into 100 days. And added time also comes with cost. I'm curious if the research um, or the data on anything that we've been talking about has, has changed in one way or another over the last few years. You know, is this, is this new learning and new reasons to make certain decisions that maybe we weren't making before just because we didn't have the data or maybe just didn't have the, the product either, maybe because product innovations have also dictated better test results and, you know, new reasons to go with one over the other. The first thing that's changed is really the market. We see a lot more work in the Midwest now, um, which has very similar you know, terrain and subgrade challenges that, as the Northeast. Um, and then you've got a lot more projects going in out West in the desert where you've got caliche and all sorts of unique soil. 
One thing though, that really makes TerraSmart unique. In 2016, we began testing with a piece of equipment. We just call it the test rig, but it is a fully automated test platform for pull testing ground screws. And it does a very detailed sequence of testing on a screw. It's not the traditional, you know, bottle jack hooked to a, you know, an I-beam pulling up on it or, or anything like that. It just being recorded on a piece of paper. Um, it's very advanced data recording. Every single test we've done, we relate it to geotech information that we have. So when we get new geotech reports for a new project, we're able to take a look at those values, compare them to the ground screw database, and really we can determine if it's a good fit for a ground screw or not. The second piece is actually picking the right ground screw. They're, they come in different lengths, different lengths of thread also. So choosing the right ground screw is important, and that database makes that very easy for us to do. Ground screws have a very predictable performance if we know the soil type and we know the torque that they're being installed. So when I first started at TerraSmart 11 years ago, all ground screws were installed to a certain torque value. And there wasn't you know, a ton of science and math to support it. We now know that that torque value was a good choice. Um, so we feel really strong about it, but we can now, uh, specify a minimum torque value for each project individually based on its soil. And then uh, added into everything we're talking about, you know, um, our wind loads and extreme weather risks that we're hearing about more and more. So first, in terms of system design, what is the most recent wind tunnel testing saying about optimal tracker design? Our leadership team makes a huge effort to invest in wind tunnel and understanding the weather risks specifically. Our 2P and our 1P product both have been completely analyzed for static, dynamic, and aeroelastic wind loads at RWDI and CPP. I think over time, as we go back into the wind tunnel, which we usually do multiple times a year, we maybe don't learn more, but we get more accurate data every time. Doing the right test, making sure you've got the right environment variables captured in the tunnel that match your product as close as they possibly can at the scale level. What we're kind of seeing now is that the focus needs to be more on the site-specific wind characteristics. And what I mean by that is, you know, placement of weather stations. Um, we just completed a wind tunnel study with CPP uh, strictly focused on optimizing the placement of weather stations to reduce risk. Everyone's so concerned with the wind on the panels, but, you know, we use that data to design the structure. And then we rely on the anemometers to catch, to capture that wind data and tell the system to do something. But the difference in what's happening at the module level and what's happening where the anemometer uh, is can be quite different in ways that I didn't expect when we did the research. So I'm excited to begin to employ this new, you know, our new weather station placement guidelines and our new weather station design. Does TerraSmart's peak yield software have any particularly novel features that help in high wind or other weather events? So at the highest level, really peak yield is designed for the installers and the customers um, right off the bat. So the user interface that supports all of the peak yield algorithms and the stow functions and the weather is very easy to use, but under the, the UI, exists you know, a lot of different activities that are ensuring the safety of the system. Algorithms are going on behind the scenes, monitoring the wind speeds from the local anemometers. But I think something unique is our deep integration with several weather APIs. So we're kind of getting to stow early by looking at radar and expected weather events that might occur rather than waiting for the wind to pick up on site. And you know, it's, it's all a customer preference, but most of our customers love to have that feature turned on. Having all that ability to push those updates, you know, it's kind of like your iPhone, um, your tracker just gets better over time because it gets more and more of those features and, and that peak yield system is constantly being improved with newer data, better information, more accurate weather model. Chase, when you're talking about that front end work, working with a customer and, you know, going through the different options and stuff, like how long is this process now with the granularity that we're getting into and all that? I mean, is the data, speeding up things a lot or is it just now we're trying to solve for so many things that it's taking longer you know what's, what's that process like we've got an entire software team dedicated to tools that our structural engineers use to 
analyze the products. So we even recognize that existing structural engineering tools out there like Risa or Stad are great, but there's so much manual work that goes into setting up those models. We have just developed our own. The layouts and the site optimization and all that really has come from our SIFT product, which is a product that we use all the time internally and share with customers to use that helps us select the best layout configuration. It helps us look at the terrain um, and we're constantly building more and more features into that product. So over time, our ability to go from learning the address of a site to first quote to final engineering package has just greatly reduced. And you, so when you say greatly reduced, can you put a, a number on that or kind of contextualize what, what that means? You know, the time from we learn the address of a project to first quote. Uh, that, when I first started, was all done in Excel. Um, all of the outputs that the, the customer needs at that time were generated manually. So CAD blocks, basic set of structural calcs, the, the cost, you know, all those things were all generated by hand. That can take three to five days. Um, for an engineer and an estimator to do. Today, the moment that address is available, the request gets made automatically, it flows through the system. A lot of the hard work or the, you know, the time consuming work of getting the weather data, all that is being done automatically. We're able to turn around quotes same day or, you know, the next morning. And with the quote, you also get automatically generated CAD blocks, site layouts, full set of structural calc packages, construction plans, fill of materials. It's all done right away. If you ask for a change, we're just going and changing one little thing and all the files get created again. Everything gets updated again. We covered a lot of ground today, uh, uneven and otherwise. And I just want to thank you for taking the time to stop by and make the pitch today. Yeah, thank you.